Hi there, my name is Jordan Tashner, course developer over at Code for Kids, and I am super excited to share with you JavaScript 2, which sees Tess the Dog, a student favorite character, return to build entire cities now with the power of JavaScript and coding. All right, so the first tab is all about recapping Test the Dog, which is JavaScript 1, a course that, um, that you would have done already. And in JavaScript 1, uh, we begin with, with something called commands or functions. Remember, the term commands and functions are completely interchangeable, but in JavaScript, we call them functions. And Test knew a bunch of different functions, and the first one was move. So remember, if we said move, she was on a grid, and inside that grid, if we say move, she uh, moves one tile in the direction that she's facing. If we say put ball, so if we go move, put ball, she will place a ball in the middle of the tile that she's moved to. If we change color before putting the ball down, then we can change the, the next tennis ball that she puts down to a different color, such as red, green, orange, yellow, depending on what color you put inside those brackets. And then we had turn left, and this was an interesting one uh, because this is what the first question is about. Um, remember, we didn't have a turn right function. We had to make the turn right function ourselves um, as part of one of the lessons in test, uh, test the Dog, course number one of JavaScript. Um, and you remember, we couldn't turn right, so how did we turn right? And the answer is we had to turn left three times because obviously, um, if you're facing a certain direction, you turn left, you turn left, you turn left, so she's then technically turn, uh, turned right. Um, it's the same as it's the same as if you were to say turn right three times, then she would turn left once. So the answer here, if we were to make test turn right, how many times would we make it turn left? The answer is three times turn left. You'll see a nice confetti animation, and this indicates that you got the question correct. You'll also see a score in the top right corner. Next, we have matching patterns. So remember, uh, we used to have all these challenges in test the dog JavaScript one, where we had to match. The different patterns of balls that we had on the grid. So same as before, we're just going to do a reminder. We have uh, the code over here. This is taken directly from course number one. You can click play to see what she's doing already. And all you need to do is move and put ball in the same pattern as that one over there. Next, we can go into the next tab, test the dog number two. This is just a continuation of the recap. And now we're going more into that, that uh, main concept of the first course, the core uh, learning outcome, which was creating functions in JavaScript, a very, very useful thing to do. So as we said earlier, turn right, we had to turn left uh, three times. And this is exactly how we define that function. Function turn right, turn left, turn left, turn left, and then the close bracket over there. So how do we fully define a function in JavaScript? We use the keyword function, then we have the name of the function. So the name should probably relate to what the function does. For example, if you place a whole bunch of balls along the top row of a grid, um, you should call that function something like full row. So we have the keyword function, the name of the function, then we have something called soft brackets or parentheses, which are those normal curved brackets that you've seen before. And then we have uh, very important curly brackets with whatever's inside the function inside. So over here, there's the keyword function, there's the name of our function, uh, there's the brackets, and then here's the curly brackets with whatever's inside our function. So now we're gonna put uh, creating functions to the test in uh, our first code snippet for it. So over here, get test to the bottom right of the grid by first fixing the turn right function. So I've done this already. This is what it'll look like for you. There's only gonna be two turn lefts. And you'll see that when test turns, She's only going to turn left twice after calling turn right over here. So to fix this, all we need to do is, as we saw above, add another turn left. And Tess is obviously going to turn right. So you're going to carry on, get Tess to the bottom right corner, pretty straightforward. And you remember, it's a lot easier to say turn right over here instead of constantly uh, saying turn left three times and then turn left three times, turn left three times every single time you want to turn right. Because in a lot of cases, you're going to want to turn right more than once. Um, so it's a lot more important to just use a function for that. Next, uh, we have another pattern. This is just to, to uh, round off the overall recap for, for JavaScript 1. Placing balls and tests uh, with different colors. So all you need to do, uh, we've done some already over here. You can check them out. Move, move, change color red. And click play to see what she does. So right now, she's dropped red and green. I think I've added that already. So I think this is what you will see. She would have only changed the color to red and added a red ball, but you can add green. Obviously I haven't done it correctly. It needs to match that pattern. So make sure you do. 
And now we get on to test the builder. So this is the new concept uh, where we bring object oriented programming in it. And all it is, is defining JavaScript objects. And the best way I can explain this is if we take a real life example, such as a student from a school and define that as a JavaScript object. So we have student and the student object has a number of different characteristics. A student could have a height, uh, the student could have a gender, the student could have a hair color, the student could have um, a, a grade. So if they're in grade four, three, five, six, doesn't matter. Um, what their subjects are, what the mark for each subject is. It can be anything that you want to define that student object um, how you like. So in this case, the objects that we are using, that test the builder is using, are buildings. Pretty straightforward. And there are a number of different types of buildings. We have three different types. So we have nature, we have uh, population, and we have energy. In nature, we have trees, uh, a whole bunch of different trees. In population, we have houses, schools, apartments. And in energy, we have wind turbines and um, nuclear power plants and all these fancy uh, energy buildings. So I'm not gonna get too much into how exactly that works. All we need to know for now in this lesson one is how does Tess actually place these different objects? And this, we're gonna introduce the newest, the newest command. It's only one new command, so very straightforward, just like move, turn right, etc. It's called place object. So if we say to Tess, place object, we need to tell her what object to place. So just like we had change color, we needed to tell her what color to change. We need to tell her what object to place. So in our instructions, uh, we would say this, place object, then the type of object, and then the name of the object. So in this case, she's dropping a nature object, and that nature object is a tree, or in this case, a fur small tree. And that's what it looks like over there. So here, we're gonna dive straight into the code, very straightforward. I think yours is gonna look like this. I've added this already. Click play to see how it works. And you can see Tess has added two trees. Quite simply, line seven and line nine, place object nature dot first small. But now you can ask, how do you know uh, what the names of these objects are? And we've given to you straight, straight here. So uh, from line 16 all the way to 24, we can see the definition of these objects. So we have a nature object, and inside we have first small. And to access that object, all we need to do is type nature dot fur small like that. But now we need to put that inside our place object function like that. And if you click play, she's doing it. So if you wanted to add, um, if I want to move one more time and I wanted to add a house, you would say population dot house. So it's always the type of object first and then the name of the object. You can find the type um, after the var keyword over here, so nature, population, and then the name of the object is this one over here, house, first small. And there's also a coal plant that we have, which we're not gonna put here. So question one, press play, then add at least one more house and at least one more tree to the city below. I've added a house, uh, but you could turn right, then move, um, then we can move again maybe, and then add another tree, like so. And if you click play, Tess will add those two trees. She's gonna place the house and then the other tree that we've just added. Pretty straightforward. So now we're gonna go into a bit more depth. You can click the next tab, a whole new world number one. And this is a familiar coding tab that you've seen before um, in a whole bunch of different courses. And here we exposing you directly to all the objects that are gonna be in Tess the Builder before we get into the nitty gritty from lesson two onwards. So here we have nature, population, and energy as you saw before. But now we have a number of nature objects, we have a number of population objects, and we have a whole bunch of energy objects. So you saw first small before, you saw house uh, before, but now we have offices, schools, apartments, coals, uh, solar plants, hydro plants, all these different types of objects. And on this tab, all we want you to do is fill each row, just like matching a pattern, fill each row of uh, Test the Builder in the grid over here with different types of objects. So what I mean by that is the whole of the first row let me just add it over here, can be nature. So let's just copy paste this a bunch of times. And the whole first row can be nature. There we go. And then the whole second row can be energy perhaps. So she needs to turn right, move, turn right. And then um, the, yeah, all of this can be, 
can be energy. So we're going to go energy and I want this to be a carbon neutral town. So let's go wind turbine. And let me just copy paste all this again. And now if I click play, she's going to place all those trees and then she's going to place um, all those wind turbines. I've missed out a grid there, but uh, a tile there, but don't worry. Uh, so that's all you need to do. So the third tile uh, could be nature again. It could be a third row, sorry, it could be nature again. It could be population, however you want. That's the first objective. And then the next objective on the next tab over here, a whole new world too. Um, again, we have access to all the objects. And now I just want uh, you to go wild. Make whatever city you want. It can be full of trees. It can be full of apartments. It can be full of energy. It could be an industrial city, uh, full of coal plants. It doesn't matter. It's up to you. And this is your open-ended question for the end of the lesson. So you can really go wild and do whatever you want to end off. And until next time, in lesson two, we're going to be going through exactly how these different objects affect different metrics, such as pollution, um, energy, money, um, and how we have to sort of balance all those different metrics in order to, to make a functioning city. And you'll see how that works in the next lesson. But for now, stick around if you want to see the solution for a whole new world number one, just to so you feel a bit more comfortable in case you need to check this video uh, for some help. So this tab asks us to fill each row with different types of objects. So when I sp was speaking earlier, we filled the first row with trees and then we filled uh, the next row with wind turbines. Let's just fix that empty one over there. Um, and in order to do that, you can see that I turn right, then move, uh, then turn right again and then move. We actually need another energy turbine just before that move there on line 55, um, like so. And now I can click play again and she should do the trees. Uh, that's perfect. And now there we go. And now she's like that. Now we need to turn left twice. Yes, turn left twice. So let's give that a go. And I'm sure you'll figure out this on your own. You just got to carry on clicking play just like the first test course. Um, this, these things take time. You got to understand just how she's moving. So she turned left once, she's got to turn left again, and then she's got to move. Uh, and then she's got to place all her objects again. So maybe this time we'll do another row of trees. Why not? And click play. Now she's going to do the trees. She's going to do the wind turbines. Uh, she's going to do some more trees. And now I want the houses uh, to be below that. So I want the houses separated from the trees just because wind turbines aren't super close to houses usually. Um, and now you can actually see a pattern here. So we're placing objects moving. Then we turn right, turn right. Then we're placing objects. Then we turn left, turn left. So the next one will be turn right, turn right. So we can actually copy all of this um, like that. And now we want... Uh, houses. So let's go population.house. Population.house. Yeah, I really encourage you just to copy and paste, make your lives a lot easier. Uh, there we go. There we go. There we go. And there we go. And now if we click play, she should do some houses underneath the, the third row of trees. And there we go. Yeah, and there are the houses. And now carrying on the pattern, now we're doing turn left. So let me actually just space these out so you can see exactly where the patterns are. Um, so yeah, you can see we started with placing objects, then we went to turn right, move, turn right, then turn left, move, turn left, turn right, move, turn left. Um, and now let's do, um, hmm, what should we do? Uh, let's do a bunch of small offices, why not? Um, so let's actually copy these, it's going to be easier. Uh, and let's go office small. I think that was the name. So let me just double check that the office small matches the name uh, over there. And there it is. Perfect. Uh, I cannot copy paste. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. And this should be the solution. This is all you need to do for a whole new world number one. Okay, she's placing, and you remember, you can make whatever uh, number of, of rows that you want, or not number of rows, and you remember, you can make uh, anything you want, so it doesn't necessarily have to be like that, and I've actually done something wrong, um, and what I've done wrong is I've, the last row is the same as the second to last row, um, because it's the same object type, 
So remember, you're not supposed to do that. So to save some time, um, just make sure that it's a different type. So nature.firstmall. I'll have the last row of B trees. Why not? We like a town with lots of trees. There we go. Fourth row will be um, all the houses. And then the bottom row will be all the trees. And that's it. And I'll see you next lesson.